For millennia upon millennia, our immune system has always been there for us. It is our fortress against pathogenic invaders. Viruses had always mutated, and our defense system has always evolved and adapted. This is nothing new. Our immune system is a war against all diseases, and our immune cells are the soldiers guarding the fortress within. But then, if God created the immune system which helps human fend off disease, then why didn't He just make us all immune to all diseases, including COVID-19? It is because our immune system today is already compromised compared to those of our forefathers. There's a lot of talk about the cytokine storm that leads to acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS, which will lead to fluid or exudate buildup in your lungs, disabling your ability to transfuse oxygen. This is how COVID-19 kills you. But if our immune system was strong enough, perhaps in the first place, there will be no such damaging cytokine storm. We breathe in pathogens every day, from our nasal passages to our trachea, to our bronchioles, and to the smallest lung unit called the alveolus, where oxygen exchange takes place. Alveolar macrophages are the frontline soldiers, and they are concentrated in the alveoli and are our first line defense against these pathogens and will be the first to attack any viruses. Our second line of defense is the natural killer cells should that be breached before the antibody-specific armies are called in. Why is our immune system not as good as our forefathers? Well, global warming and greenhouse effect have certainly affected the quality of air we breathe and the water we drink. Just look at the pictures of Klang River during the MCO shutdown. It is actually clear and not murky. Undoubtedly, our constant exposure to electromagnetic fields from mobile phones and other gadgets and also the rampant use of antibiotics are also reasons for our compromised immunity in the 21st century. Nutrition-wise, the quality of food we eat may not be as nutritious as those of our forefathers. The soil we plant our crops in are depleted of vital nutrients. Yes, we are increasingly seeing organic products being offered, but for years, we have used tons of chemical fertilizers and insecticides on our crops. My grandparents truly ate chemical-free produce that are grown in their own farm in Ulanga. Hydroponics and vertical farming have come a long way, but are they really as nutritious and have similar vitamin profiles as those grown on good soil? Even if you add in the minerals and vitamins, it may not have the same balance and profile as those grown naturally from good soil. Malaysians are born to eat. Just look at the junk that they are eating in marmak stores and fast food stores. Frankly, the hawker stores may serve lots of nice delicacies, but they may be void in the essential nutrients for our protection and immunity. The MCO has morphed some of us into cooks, and I see many previous undiscovered Michelin talent suddenly popping up on Facebook postings during the lockdown. But unlike our grandparents who cook most of their meals, we take the quality of our nutrition for granted and often eat in calories without the important nutrients for our immune system. Recently in the news, they are developing a synthetic palm oil and surely it can't replicate the complete vitamin profile and balance of naturally grown palm oil. Sugar kills. After a high GI or sugary meal, not only do we feel sleepy, but our white blood cells, the immune cells, are lethargic. Foods with a high glycemic index contain carbohydrates that will dramatically raise your blood glucose levels, while low GI food 
will raise it much less. Industrialization has changed our diet. Our ancestors ate carbohydrates in the form of beans, vegetables, fruits and whole grains. They ground the food between stones and cooked it over heat and the fiber was still intact. As a result, the carbohydrates eaten were digested and absorbed slowly, resulting in a low glycemic response in the blood. Today, we eat new foods based on these whole grains, but the original grain has been grounded down to produce fine flours of small particle size that produce fine quality breads, cakes, cookies, crackers, pastries and cereals and snack foods. Well, just go to the shopping malls and look at the amount of shops dedicated to provide you with refined sugar. Cake shops, bubble tea shops, candy and chocolate shops for instance. Our bodies quickly digest and absorb these refined carbohydrates resulting in a high blood glucose and insulin response. Refined carbohydrates or sugar not only makes us age faster by forming advanced glycated end products but suppresses our immune system. Obesity is associated with higher comorbidities, including complications of COVID infections. Each generation is more sedentary than ever. Our kids spend so much time on the computer these days. In the past, we grew up cycling, school, catching frogs in the river, fishing, playing at the beaches. Due to the hustle and bustle of life, most of us don't exercise regularly. It's important that we do so. Fasting is a virtue in most religions. I'm not asking you to, to do a 40 days fast like Jesus, but occasional days per week of intermittent fasting will help reduce insulin resistance and boost your immunity. You can try uh, for a start 16-8 window and then gradually progress to a 24 window and perhaps one meal a day. Fasting is not only good for the soul, but for the body and the immune system. Eat more natural plant-based foods that God gave us. I'm not here to promote or decry the wellness industry or direct selling companies, as most of them are overpriced and overclaim on their products. But it is good that they are raising awareness of the need for good nutrition. Were we made to be vegetarians? I believe so. When mankind failed, God made clothes from animal skin to cover Adam and Eve. Before the fall of mankind, there was no killing of animals and they lived in symbiosis with each other. There is even suggestion that when Christ comes back to restore his millennial kingdom, we will be or might be vegetarians again. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, reading from verse 6, it reads, The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will leap. Consume more superfoods to boost your immunity. Every morning when I wake up, I blend green apples, celery, pineapple, cucumber, or whatever is in the mix. I also add in crushed pink Himalayan salt for its trace minerals and also apple cider vinegar. God had put all these plants on earth for a reason. There's no need to buy expensive supplements to improve your health. If buying expensive supplements was the only way to stay healthy and ahead, then only those who are rich enough to pay thousands of ringgit or dollars can beget good health. No, this is not true. God is fair and made these plants available so even the poor can have a strong immune system. My maid has literally turned our backyard into an orchard. She now prefers to eat her own produce rather than what we buy for her. And she always shuns meat. Well, it is little wonder that TCM or traditional Chinese medicine has been reported to be effective in treating COVID. TCM has been around for centuries upon millennia. TCM prevents mucus and exudate buildup in the alveoli and also boosts the immune system. I do not intend to go into all the other superfoods like 
garlic, ginger, ganoderma, ginseng, turmeric, lemon, aloe vera, etc. As that will be another video in itself. But what I do take regularly is vitamin C, turmeric, omega fish oil, garlic, B complex, calcium and magnesium, astragalus, and spirulina. Watch your meat consumption. Saturated fats and trans fats not only raises blood cholesterol, but can kill your immune system. We all like roast and barbecue, but overcooked meat loses its nutritional value. Meats make our blood acidic, which in turn stuns the immune cells. It is also known that cancer cells thrive in an acidic environment. Therefore, try to eat more plant-based foods rather than animal-based food. Don't be harsh on yourself and change your habits slowly. Drastic changes to dietary habits are often unsustainable and one will usually rapidly revert to old entrenched habits. Our ancestors ate meat from wild animals which contain about 4% fat. Today, commercial meats like beef and pork contain around 30% fat as they are fed with grains to beef them up. Worse still, these days, they are treated with antibiotics and growth enhancers. The main problem is not the fat in the meat, but the fat which we can skin off or cut out, such as the pork belly. This should be minimized from our diet. And furthermore, internal organs are high in cholesterol. Humans were designed to eat more plant than animal foods. For instance, we have 20 molar teeth for grinding plant foods, 8 frontal incisors for biting fruits and vegetables, and only 4 canine teeth. A true carnivore like the tiger has predominantly canine teeth, and its jaws move only vertically, unlike the human jaw, which also moves horizontally. The tiger's intestinal tract is three times shorter than a human's for a rapid transit of rancid meat and also has a kidney that's much bigger to flush out the uric acid. No doubt, meats provide a good source of protein, but many beans and plant produce are also a good source of protein. Bear in mind, some of the strongest animals like the elephant and gorilla are herbivores and purely plant eaters. Seafood restaurants are very popular throughout the country. Essentially, there are two types of seafood, those with fins and scales and those without. If you ever watch National Geographic, you'll realize that fishes swim across all levels and depths of the sea as they have fins. Imagine the ceiling of your house as the sea level while the floor is the seabed. Rubbish and oil spills will settle at the seabed as they have a higher specific gravity than water. Those without fins, such as crabs, shellfish, lobster, prawns, oysters, clams and mussels, are usually sitting on the seabed and are nature's vacuum cleaners to keep the seabed clean. Yes, we are now commercially farming these seafood produce using aquamimicry and recirculating aquaculture systems but in the ecology of the sea they are designed to clean up all the rubbish toxins oil spills bacteria viruses on the floor of the sea crabs are even known to eat dead things these meats should be minimized for healthy living Little wonder these foods are associated with gout, high cholesterol and allergies as they contain toxins. If you simply can't resist these foods, then limit them to once a week and in small quantities. Some fishes are deemed unclean for consumption because they do not have scales. Well, without scales, perhaps heavy metals like lead and mercury and other toxins may accumulate in the membranes of these fishes. Lastly, stay safe. Although we all like the idea of an imminent COVID-19 vaccine, it really is not like the immune system that God gave us. 
Not only is the vaccine 12 months away, but will it work? Be reminded that there's still no vaccines for SARS and MERS, even though they were discovered 17 and 7 years respectively. And there's still no coronavirus vaccines for them, despite dozens of attempts to develop them.